you do not have um, the the encouragement, the the doctrinal teaching about family and how important it is um, in other institutions, colleges, and so forth. That it is a noble thing to be a father, a noble thing to be a mother, and to accept God's rich blessings of children and to raise them in the Christian faith. And that as a mother and father, honoring marriage and honoring the family, raising those kids in the Christian faith is the great priority of your life, Mm -hmm. right? That is not something that is like taught in every single classroom and every single class and so forth, no matter what you're learning about science, math, music, history, communication, whatever, right? It will be here. And to have student after student, couple after couple, married couple after married couple, um, go out into our LCMS churches with that kind of mindset, of course, is game changing. Mm-hmm. You say, oh, well, only 300 students. We're going to cap it at 300 students. Yeah. This, this is exponential growth, actually. Right? Mm-hmm. Just think about it. Look, look, read numbers or read uh, First Chronicles. It's very boring, the first uh, six chapters. I, God forgive me for saying that the Bible is boring, but the first six, seven chapters. But what you do see is exponential growth in uh, these families, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, And as long as you you just have to be faithful, right? Focus on the home. So that's the one thing, is that we want to reinvigorate, um, get people excited about family, living the Lutheran life, living the congregational life. Mm -hmm. Um, So when they leave this home or leave this college, they're excited to start their own home in their own congregation uh, throughout the United States. Well, just to put some numbers on that, because in my mind immediately a bunch of numbers of you doing that. So if you've got 300 kids, now, if they get married, you could double this, right? You could say, okay, well, they go off and they, you, if they all get married outside of the college 600, but let's just say 300. You've got 300, average of four kids, that's 1,200. Do that over uh, the next generation. You've got 5,000. So one year of graduates in two generations, if they are raising kids in a, in a, in a, in a well-functioning, Christian-oriented household that is entrenched with this kind of Christian theology and thinking, in two generations, you've got 5,000 kids. And that's every graduating class. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that number goes higher if you've got them marrying people, you know, outside of that college and bringing that into their household yeah. as well. So, yeah, in two generations, 5,000 every year, that's pr- pretty quickly you're going to get to the number of the LCMS. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, just, yeah. just numerically, that's, yeah. and that's just one college, right? You're saying exactly. if you get three or four, exactly. you can change the fabric. Yeah. So, if you want to be, uh, I mean, if you want to be all like numbers about this and like it's, it, there's something crass about it, right? Mm-hmm. And it, about trying to be like, hey, we're going to grow the church by having babies and so forth, right? Um, that, that, that's not what we're saying. However, this is how God grows his church. I think it's funny when people are like, it's the word, the word, the word. But Luther said that, of course, right? Mm-hmm. But God also uses mommies and daddies who speak the word, yeah. right? Um, and he also uses mommies and daddies who uh, help create babies, right? Yeah. That is a synergy right there. We're monergists, but uh, we believe in synergism when it comes to uh, having babies because it takes a man and a woman. And then you raise them in the Christian faith. God uses families. He uses the estates that he's given. And when you teach people that and get them excited about family and excited about church life, right, it does have its fruit. That's exactly why people are excited about this college. And uh, we, we will... Um, by God's grace, uh, see that numerical growth um, when we are faithful, yeah. right? And if God says decides something else, that's up to him, mm-hmm. right? But this is the normal way that he grows his church. And by the way, when you have an excited family, right, they talk to their neighbors about it, mm-hmm. right? So when we talk about like a college being a mission, a college is a mission of the church in the sense that uh, a, a congregation is a mission of the church. It's for the faithful, However, what do the faithful do? They go out into the world and they bring people to church. So mm-hmm. also other people, the, the, the graduates of Luther Classical College will go out into the world, right? They'll live the Christian life. They'll be the salt. They'll be the light, as Jesus tells them to do in Matthew chapter 5. Uh, and people will see their good works and glorify their Father who is in heaven. So that's the first thing, mm-hmm. is just the general reinvigoration. Um, is it higher things had that? Um, that that slogan dare to be Lutheran um, and mm-hmm. our, but but really dare to be Lutheran mm-hmm. uh, live the Lutheran life live Lutheran culture um, second is uh, the seminaries need 
uh, students. Mm -hmm. They need good students. Yeah. They need students and they need good students. They don't just need warm bodies, right? They don't need need leaders. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, We're heading into more difficult times. We don't need lazy pastors. Mm -hmm. We don't need um, uh, pastors with absolutely no ambition. Um, uh, And we don't need unfaithful pastors. We Mm -hmm. need faithful, ambition, uh, ambitious and hardworking pastors who can lead their congregations with love and with the word of God. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's exactly what we want to provide the seminaries. We estimate uh, 15 a year mm-hmm. um, that we'll be sending to uh, what, once we hit 2029, we actually have graduates uh, 15 a year uh, to the seminaries. Right now, each seminary is averaging 40, right? So 15 out of 80. Wow. Wow. That's a pretty big number, yeah. right? From one little college, right? And we'll see if, if it's 15, if it's 20, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then also when it comes to teachers, uh, there's so many classical Lutheran schools. Basically, every new school that's starting in the LCMS is classical Lutheran mm-hmm. because why would you do anything else besides classical once you've seen what it is, yeah. right? Why would you read a, a textbook of some guy uh, telling you about Caesar and not read Caesar? Mm-hmm. makes no sense whatsoever, right? Mm-hmm. So once you discover classical, uh, you, you don't go back to what is totally inferior. Um, so I, I want to circle back to that too after yeah. trying to get through, like, because that's, I think, important. I really want to kind of hash that out. Look at the Notre Dame study. I don't know if you saw yes. the classical yeah. difference. I mean, those yeah, numbers good soil are, study. I don't know how you, w- once you look at those numbers, there's no turning back. Yeah, the data the data's on our side. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it's also just empirically obvious. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, there is huge need for classical Lutheran teachers, and we would be providing uh, uh, those classical Lutheran teachers. We have um, a ton of support uh, from CCLE, uh, the Consortium for Classical Lutheran Education, which, by the way, is growing and growing and growing. I think they had 400 or 500 people at their conference this year, and they had to like, oh yeah, they had to sh- shut the doors. Right, that more people w- were wanting to come. Mm-hmm. Right, it, classical education is simply the thing yeah right it's what people are pursuing uh, in their home schools and in their in, in their schools and we need to provide teachers for them and capable again just like our pastors capable good teachers faithful ambitious who love children and love god's word mm-hmm. um so those were the those are the three big ones the general f- just family we're, we're not just raising teachers and pastors here mm-hmm. um or sorry educating uh pastors and teachers here we're educating people who are going to end up being plumbers mm-hmm. right that's one thing I didn't bring up is that we also are uh, going to be having a um, a trade track. Okay. Right? Yeah. So where someone can get an AA here, so like a two year degree here, and then uh, also get a, a certificate in say plumbing, electrical work, HVAC work, whatever it is, and work with his hands and um, glorify God that way. But while you know you're fixing that toilet, you're singing wake awake for night is flying mm-hmm. right um or you're thinking about uh what uh you know uh virgil said in the sixth book of the aeneid or you're uh wondering about why uh, uh why the the baptists uh could possibly think that john chapter three isn't talking about baptism mm-hmm. right yeah uh, we need plumbers like that mm-hmm. who uh, will make more than i do yeah given what i pay to my plumber i'm pretty sure that's true it's like 250 dollars an hour or something yeah they're doing okay god bless them they can they can buy cigars at runaway <laughs> 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 uh, yeah so um the that uh trade that trade partnership is going to be awesome mm-hmm. uh, uh as well but so we are about invigorating homes and congregations uh within our synod and that happens not just through pastors and teachers. It happens through faithful uh, laymen mm-hmm. uh, and faithful laywomen uh, leading families. And even if they end up not getting married for one reason or another, um, being um, faithful examples of uh, men and women uh, to their congregation. Mm-hmm. Also, they're going to be capable of like singing, reinvigorating choirs. These are things that, that objectively are part of a healthy and joyful life. And yes. It's not rocket science. These are things that have always been the case. Yes. Right. Singing, community, understanding objective to truth, loving virtue, despising vice, all of these types of things. And there's nothing more important in your life. I mean, Christianity is, is the, the, the king of this. It's the chief of this. Right. But like that's 
the goal. Like God created you in his image. Like he wants to uh, raise you up and make you healthy, mm-hmm. right? To salve, right? So that's that's the goal. And these are these are wonderful tools and blessings that God has given to this. These aren't just like hobbies, right? Yeah. These are these are things that are formative to what it means to be a man and a woman who lives a healthy life. And the the lacrimosa, the the, the uh, lament is that these things have been taken away. And yes. Therefore, children and myself, you know, growing up, yep. we, we're just we're bankrupt of these things. Yeah. And we it's a robbed. tragedy. Yep. And Luther College and classical education, you know, and, and all of these things, these are these are just returning to those things which are objectively beautiful and good for man and woman to do. Yes. And these are necessary not just for your child, but for the church to be healthy, which has just gone through its greatest decline in, in all of its history in the last mm-hmm. 70 years, you know, which just so happens to coincide with us leaving the, these, these, <laughs> this heritage that we have, right? I yeah, mean, imagine just, that. Yeah. Yeah, and the, that's the other sort of clarion call uh, of, of Luther Glasgow College is that there is nothing to despair of here. Mm-hmm. You return to the foundation, and the foundation, the rock, Jesus Christ and his word, uh, which teaches all of the things that we've just been talking about, mm-hmm. one way or another. It teaches what a man is, what a woman is, what it means to be created in the image of God. It tells us to sing, right? It tells mm-hmm. us to reflect on God's nature. Solomon studied ants, right? And plants. Um, didn't mean for that to rhyme. But uh, you return to that foundation. You let Christ grow his church. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, will, he will do it through, um, a, a, again, a return to uh, being faithful to uh, his word, of course, above all, but realizing that being faithful to his word um, has implications for our home and for our churches and for how we educate, mm-hmm. right? Um, and uh, things like this creep up on generations, right? We're not casting blame on people, um, especially not like when my father and mother raised me in the Christian faith. We sang hymns in our, in, in our home and so forth. Um, but um, the public school system turning towards a total, totally secular religion, right? And being anti-Christian happened largely in my lifetime, mm-hmm. right? In the last 40 years. Um, and it wasn't as visible in the previous 40 years. So these things sneak up on people. But now that it's very obvious and in our face, we all just have to admit it and say, we cannot subject our kids to a different religion. And we have to build up, um, again, the foundation um, and pursue good classical Christian Lutheran education from uh, childhood to adulthood. Mm-hmm. Build it out of the ashes, right? Build it out of the ashes. It. And thank you for doing it. Not really. So, yeah. I mean, I got to run to the bathroom here in a minute, but I just want to just kind of <laughs> like one final plug. I mean, Christian culture. So, if people want to learn more about Luther uh, Classical College, is Christian culture, is this the best way? To go about doing it like yes go to our website subscribe to the magazine mm-hmm. um and then also just read through uh, our website um in in january we'll be we'll, we'll be publishing our academic catalog on there but there's plenty of stuff on there already uh previews of uh our curriculum and so forth um our uh strategic plan things like that 